Hello and welcome to this Sophistic tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create parametric families for our Sophistic bridge and infrastructure modeler. Please make sure to take a look in the description to find the project files and to find a general description. We suggest three methods for parametrizing your family. The first one is to create reference points in a Y and Z direction. The second one is to create aligned dimensions to move your reference point. And the third one is to use reference lines to uh, create an intersection between them. And in, at the intersection, there will be your reference point. Today, we will take a closer look at reference points in a Y and a Z direction. As you can see right here, we have our origin host point, like we had it in our very simple family. And depending on that, we create a reference point that has an offset in Y direction. And from that point, we create another reference point that has an offset in Z direction. So we want to create two kinds of variables. The first ones are user accessible, like the drainage, height in the web, the slope, or the width in the web. We want our user to input those and to control the whole structure with just these input variables. For example, the slope, if it is positive, it will create a drainage on the right side. If it is negative, it will create the drainage on the left side. And the second kind of variables will actually create our structure because they will move those individual points of our family. As you can see here, all interesting points are numbered in my uh, little system right here. And for every single number, I will need a reference point in Y direction and in Z direction. And those will be controlled by those variables. These can be rather simple, like the ones you see on the screen right now. And those can get rather complicated, like point six and nine, as you will see in a minute. So those points create my structure. As you can see here, again, I have dimensions that will be input by our user. And we have other variables that will create our structure. And as mentioned before, number six is rather complicated because it is created by two different angle intersections. Those uh, are easier handled with reference lines. But let's take a look on how to create this family. Here we are in Revit and now we want to create this new family. So I go to families, new, and here I select English and the metric generic model adaptive. This is the family template we always use for Sophistic Bridge and Infrastructure Modeler families. Remember, we always work from the left because this is the orientation that uh, the family is going to be placed by the bridge modeler. And we will just place a reference point into our system. Right now, it doesn't matter uh, which work plane we selected. And what we want to do is we want to make this point adaptive and we want to set it to host. Now I will simply align this point to my origin of the family. And this is now my reference point or my adaptive point that the whole family is going to be placed at. So if the axis runs through my system right here, it means that if my axis is aligned like this, my point will be placed along this axis in this reference. Okay, so as we already uh, defined in my, as I already defined in my presentation before, we will have 10 points in our system. Now, the first point uh, will be on my left side, all the way out here. And now it is important to understand the way that uh, reference points refer to each other. So when I place my point into my system right here, I can see there is an option for an offset. This offset is always orthogonal to the reference plane that is selected and the parametricity of the point works with these offsets, meaning that the origin point 
to the uh, new point actually has a variable behind it. If I want to define the horizontal information for my first point, I have to set my work plane to this work plane right here. What does that mean? As you can see, this is the work plane that is selected right now. And what I meant by uh, offset, it is the orthog orthogonal distance from my first point that I selected from the origin point of my work plane. But this also means that the new work plane of this uh, horizontal information point must be selected to add a point that has the vertical information. So right here, I can just simply place my point somewhere in the system. It doesn't matter where I place it. I will set an offset of any value at this point is fine. So it just doesn't uh, run into our origin point. And now I use the align command to align the two dimensions. So we have information in this direction with this point. Now we have to tell this point to align to our origin point. I simply do this by selecting those two planes that are not our, our actual work plane right now. And as you can see, if I change the offset now from 100 to, for example, 200 or 20, <laughs> or 300, it will move along. Now I will set the uh, reference plane that is shown of this point to visible. And as mentioned before, to work properly with the parametrization of uh, reference points, we have to first add a horizontal distance. And from this point, we now select this work plane and now orthogonal to this work plane. We can again give information for the vertical displacement, the offset of this point. So I can just again place my point, my reference point somewhere in space, doesn't matter. I give it an offset of 500. And now again, as I know that this dimension, the orthogon orthogonal distance is from this reference plane, I only have to align it to these two reference planes. So I do this with my align command. We never use the lock button right here because this is not needed. And what I meant with parametrization is if I move this point right now, the vertical point will move along. Now it is time to take a look at how to create your family parameters. In my presentation, I already indicated that we use two kinds of parameters. Ones are dimensions. Those can be input by the user later on in Revit when we use the Sophistic Bridge and Infrastructure Modeler and other. Other are the kind of parameters that we use for calculations in the background. For example, the coordinates of our singular points. I will start by creating all the necessary input dimensionings. The first one is drainage. The drainage gives me the distance from the edge of the bridge to where the drainage actually is placed. It is a length parameter and we want the user to input it. The next one is height web. It is also a length parameter, dimensions and an instance parameter. We only use instance parameters. The next one is my slope. And now it gets interesting because this one is an instance parameter, but it's not a length. The slope is a slope and we want it to be input by our user. But now we see, oh, this is just in degrees, but we actually want it to be in a uh, percentage. How do I change that? I go to manage and project units. Right here, you can see our slope right now is set to degrees. And we can simply go into here and set it to percentage. This will also affect our family parameters. So once we go back to create and take a look, we can see right now it is percentage. 
Right now I will fast forward through finishing all the parameters. And I will not only create them, but also already give them a standard value. So now that we created all the input parameters, we are ready to create the, in, the parameters that work in the background. For example, for my point number one, my horizontal information, one underline y, it is going to be an instance, it is a length, and I select others for my group. So my user is not able to input it. I do the same for the vertical information of this point. And now, right here, I can add a formula to create the value of the point, which means for my horizontal information, this is going to be my width underline deck, as you can see, this is one of my input parameters that I created, divided by two. And the vertical information of my point is going to be my point one underline y, so my horizontal information multiplied by my slope. As you can see, the values are automatically generated. And right now I will again fast forward through my creation of my points from 1 to 10. In this example I already know what my parameters have to look like. If you want to do it as you go along with the project, this is of course also possible. You can find the project files down in the description and in it you will find the point information that I added right here. Now I will start creating my points using my offset variables. So as you can see right here, this is my point number one and I add my Y information to it. So the horizontal information. This is my vertical point set. So I select this one. And now I already got the right information for it. And now I can keep going like that with all my reference points. So when I, in when I create my point number two, I can already give it my horizontal information for number two. And now I will align it to my origin point. So we are aligned perfectly in this way. As you can see, uh, this is my horizontal point now. I will activate its reference uh, planes and I will select the right reference plane again to create the vertical offset. I will do this for every point in my system and again now I will align it to my horizontal information point and so on. I will do this for my points that are depending on my origin point right here and the next step is to show you how to select a secondary point. But first let's finish these points. If you don't want to follow me creating these points, please skip ahead two minutes.
So now I created all the points that are dependent on my origin point. And now I will show you another trick because we can not only use points that are actually create horizontal and vertical information, we can also create secondary main points. In this case, it is nothing special. It is just easier for me uh, when I'm building my bridge like this to have a secondary point right uh, under the main insertion point, which has the value of my height in the middle. And this again, this is the absolute height. So it doesn't matter uh, what value, if it is positive or negative, it will always, it does matter if it is positive or negative, but it will have the right input value as we defined it before. So as you can see now, it is input positive, but in the coordinate system, it's actually negative. I will also activate its reference planes. And depending on this point, I actually create my point number seven and eight. So I'll set the horizontal reference plane as my reference. And this is my horizontal information for point seven, for example. So it is not depending on my main point right here. It is depending on my secondary point. This way you can also make your life a little easier. I will also create the horizontal information for my point eight. And as always, it is very important to always align your points so you have the right reference for them. And for both of them, I will also activate my reference planes because now it is time to create the vertical information in this case for point seven. Here we go. We also align it again. And now I set my work plane to my horizontal point eight. And now I add another point for the vertical information for point eight. I simply align it. And those are my secondary points. Now it is time to create my point six and nine, which are a little bit more complicated than the usual points. One of the reasons for that is because I created them based on my origin point, you could of course make your life easier by creating another secondary point. But I start with the horizontal point with the, for my point number six. The horizontal information for my point number six is six Y. I align it to my origin point and I activate its reference planes. I select its horizontal reference plane to create an orthogonal offset for my vertical displacement for point number six. I align it to this point that I want it to be referred to. And now I create my point number nine. With the same workflow, I create my point. It becomes the horizontal, it gets the horizontal information for my point number nine. I align it to, I align it to my origin point. I activate its reference plane. I set the horizontal reference plane as my work plane. I create my new point. This point now gets the vertical displacement as a value, as an offset value and I align it. And now I'm ready to create my cross section, which means that now all my points are created properly and I can connect them the way that they are supposed to. We always connect singular points by selecting two of them and clicking on the spline through points command. The big advantage compared to splines or other line types is that these lines will now move with the movement of the points that we selected. And I will connect all the points of my structure.
So as you can see, this is the cross section that I created. And if you ever want to uh, take a point out of this system, or you want to change anything about the system, use the dissolve function. If you just select uh, the line tray, it will delete all the included points. If you use the dissolve button, the points will stay in your system. By the way, one last thing that I want to show you or that is important for your creation of your points is the differentiation. You notice that I left uh, the reference planes on for the points that give me horizontal information. So I know which points uh, actually I want to include in my cross section. We uh, recommend to select all of the horizontal points once you are done creating it and set them to not always show it, but only when selected. So now you know your main points are the ones that have the reference planes turned on. Your horizontal points will have the reference planes turned on once you select them. And the points that give you vertical information and are parameterized uh, don't have a reference plane turned on. So now the family is done. We will create a new project. The template doesn't matter. I will go to 3D. I will select my Sophistic Bridge application. I will create a simple axis. Doesn't really matter about the geometry. Just so we have one. And now I will load it into the project. And right now it's selected, but I actually don't need that. I only need it to be loaded into my project because once I select my superstructure command now, I have to select an axis and it will suggest uh, the bridge that I, or the cross section that I created to use in my bridge example. As you can see right here, it's called family number two. And those are my input parameters. Again, this is in degrees right now. This will be uh, calculated with the standard values that we put. We can of course go to manage and change it to percentage, but I will simply uh, leave the bridge like this. And you can add additional uh, parameter parametrization values to the axis and add it to the values that we have right here. So for example, I could go to edit, go to variables, create a variable for height. So we'll call it hashtag height or just height. And for example, set a value of thousand in the beginning, 3000 in the middle, also 3000 here. and thousand in the end. And I will select this from a height in the, in the web. What this does, you will see in a minute, by the way, this is just to show you what is going on here. For example, here I have my height web. For now it is set to a constant value. I want to set it to a variable and it will automatically select the variable that I created. And now we can take a look at the parametrization that it's happening. Now the structure is updated with the variable that we added, which means that now the height of the cross section is variable uh, along the axis. Let's sum up the main takeaway from this video. The first thing is that we always define our reference points orthogonal to the selected work plane. Once we created this reference point, we align it to the other two remaining work planes. So it is perfectly aligned and only has information in its offset direction. Talking about this offset, we want to feed it then with uh, parameters. So this way we can add a parametrization to this system. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact us via info at sophistic.de and I hope this helped you understanding how to create families for your SBIM project. Goodbye!